Greetings, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today's teaching is entitled, Exposing False Prophets. That is, Exposing False Prophets. A prophet is someone that is known to foretell the future. They tell us what will happen in the future before these things happen. But not all prophets are equal. The Holy Scriptures speak of righteous prophets of the Most High, such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. But it also tells us of the 400 prophets of Baal and other false prophets. As not all prophets are equal, how can we know whether the people who claim to be prophets today were sent by the Most High or if they are simply trying to deceive us? In this teaching, we will explore the Holy Scriptures, which Christians call the Old Testament, to answer the following questions. 1. What is a prophet? Of the Most High. 2. Who are some examples of false prophets today? And 3. Are there any prophets of the Most High today? Question number 1. What is a prophet of the Most High? There is a significant difference between genuine prophets of the Most High and false prophets that were not sent by the Most High. So, to answer this question, I will explain what it means to be a prophet of the Most High and I will also give examples of modern day prophets that were not sent by the Most High. 1 Kings chapter 9 verse 6 and 9. 1 Kings chapter 9 in the Septuagint is 1 Samuel chapter 9 in the KJV. So I'm reading 1 Kings chapter 9 verses 6 and 9 in the Brenton Septuagint translation. It reads thus, And the young man said to him, Behold now, there is a man of the Most High in this city. And the man is of high repute. This means he has a good reputation, much unlike most people who claim to be prophets today. This man of the Most High did not steal money from his followers. He didn't con them into giving that seed that they like to ask you to sow so that you can get a blessing from the Most High. I love that scripture. It says, when you help those in need, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. That's what you do each week or every time you give, you are lending to God. And I know you've seen in your own life, God knows how to repay you. See, God is my business partner and my giving to him is his cut. And if I rip off his cut, why should he bless me? I start giving on that level so that God would owe me. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. Why don't you make a financial vow to the Lord right now while I'm talking to you? If you're facing a problem and watch what God will do with you. This was an honest man of the most high of high repute. It continues. All... Not some, but all that he shall speak will surely, not maybe, not perhaps, not sometimes, but surely come to pass. All that he shall speak will surely come to pass. This is how we know that we are dealing with a prophet of the Most High. Every single thing. Thing that that prophet speaks will surely come to pass. If someone claims to be a prophet, but there's even the slightest thing that that person prophesies that does not come to pass, that is evidence that that individual is not a prophet of the Most High. 
he or she might be a prophet of another deity. He or she can get their prophecies, their visions from evil spirits from some other source. But if every single thing that that person prophesies does not come to pass, if only 1% fails, that's all we need to know. That we are dealing with someone that is not sent by the Most High. It continues, Now then let us go, that he may tell us our way on which we have set out. So, a prophet of the Most High is a spokesperson for the Most High. This is why everything he says must come to pass. They are the words of the Most High. If someone claims to speak on behalf of the Most High, but anything at all that they prophesy does not come to pass, that person is not truly a prophet of the Most High. We must have 100% accuracy in the prophecy or the Most High did not send that person. Let's examine an example of a modern day prophet that claims to speak on behalf of the Most High, but all that he says does not come to pass. And this means that he is not a prophet of the Most High. And then I saw an attempt on his life. Uh, that, that this bullet flew by his ear and it came so close to his head that it busted his drum, eardrum. This individual said that President Trump's eardrum would be damaged or burst in the assassination attempt, but that did not happen. Hence, this is not 100% accuracy, and we can conclude that he is not a prophet of the Most High. It really is that simple. In fact, he is a prophet of Lucifer. Lucifer wants to be like the Most High and he often reveals secrets to his prophets. For a thorough understanding of this subject, please listen to my teaching entitled The Revelation of Lucifer. That is, the revelation of Lucifer. Verse 9. Now before time in Israel, everyone in going to inquire of the Most High said, Come and let us go to the seer. For the people before time called the prophet the seer. In biblical times, the prophets were also called seers. If a prophet or seer prophesied something that did not come to pass with 100% accuracy, this meant that he or she was not a prophet of the Most High. The Most High did not send that person. The same is true today. Let's learn more about this in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22 says this, Whatsoever words that prophet shall speak in the name of the Most High, and they shall not come true, and not come to pass, this is the thing which the Most High has not spoken. The prophet has spoken wickedly, ye shall not spare him. So the prophet of Lucifer, who claimed that President Trump's eardrum would be burst or damaged in the assassination attempt, has spoken wickedly. Again, I'm not denying that this man is a prophet. He clearly received a vision, but it was not 100% accurate. 
and that's the evidence that he did not receive the vision from the Most High. He received the vision from the one that wants to be like the Most High and sit on the throne of the Most High, the one who has his own prophets who come to deceive the people of the Most High, but by understanding the signs of a false prophet, which means a prophet that was not sent by the Most High, we can avoid being deceived. The reason why President Trump's eardrum did not burst the way that the prophet of Lucifer said it would is because the Most High did not send that prophet. The Most High is not the one that revealed these things to him. Listen closely to this admission. People keep asking, what about the eardrum? You missed it on the eardrum. You missed it on the eardrum. And it didn't bust. Nothing bust about the eardrum. This false prophet has since issued an apology stating that he added the bit about the eardrum and that he shouldn't have done that. However, this so-called mistake is the one thing that lets us know that he is not a prophet of the Most High. The prophets of the Most High did not make mistakes in their prophecies. They said exactly what the Most High revealed to them, and they did not add anything to what the Most High had revealed. Doing so would have cost them their lives. What false prophets do today, and I'm referring to those who actually receive visions from evil spirits, is when a certain portion of the prophecy does not come to pass, they simply say, it was a rookie mistake. Sorry, oops, shame on me. Shame on me. But we do not find this in the Holy Scriptures. The prophets of the Most High prophesied with one hundred percent accuracy and there was no need for them to apologize so any prophet so-called that makes a false prophecy and comes to apologize is still a false prophet shame on them shame on me some modern day prophets choose to give vague prophecies so that it would be difficult to use this test to prove that they are not prophets of the Most High. They even go as far as to give one-word prophecies so that we cannot check their accuracy. Here is an example of a prophetess of Lucifer using this deceptive tactic. Okay, now listen, I want you to stay on your feet, and I've got a prophetic word for you in my heart. And when I say a word, I mean it's one word. This has come on me four times in about the last year and a half. The same thing. And God put it in my heart again for this place tonight. And I tell you, if you'll receive it, it's going to put you into a new realm. And here's the word. Double. Double, 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 double. There is not even one example in the Holy Scriptures of a prophet of the Most High giving a one word prophecy. This is because one word prophecies are a scam. They are not of the Most High. It should be clear by now that these modern day prophets are not of the Most High. Just like soothsayers, diviners, psychics, voodoo priests, witch doctors and so forth get their knowledge of the future from evil spirits. It is the same with these modern day prophets. They are not of the Most High. Question number two. Who are some examples of false prophets today? In this section, we will hear from false prophets who claimed that in the year 2020, the Most High told them that President Trump would serve two consecutive terms in office. That's a period of eight years. And that Biden 
would not become president. We know that Trump did not serve two years in office and that Biden did in fact become president of the United States of America. Therefore, we can confirm that the people we are about to hear from are all false prophets. Watch and listen closely. Some people can't be chosen by God because they can't believe for anything past a week or two weeks. And he assured me back in 2015 that Trump would sit in the White House for eight years. Son of man, do you think that I am going to allow my prophets who prophesied Trump's second term and prophesied what all this goodness coming to this nation to be mocked by a mass media manipulation? The Lord says, no, I shall not. Will President Trump, from what God has shown you, win his second term? Uh, yes, it is, is for sure uh, said that God wants uh, President Trump in. That's not the question. Now, dream three. This gets a little crazy. He came to you again. What, what did he ask you this well, time? Well, the third time was after the inauguration. So he's just starting his, his this yeah. term, the first term. And he comes to me, and, and I got to say, this is one of the most powerful of the three dreams. He came very short, and he said, I want to ask you to be my running mate. That was the phrase, running mate, for the coming election 2020. Four years four away. Four years away. Yeah. And that was all there was to the dream, and I woke up. He said, I will win, and Trump will still sit in the White House for four more years. They say, well, Kat, if you prophesied eight years, is it that it's four now and four later? No, no, it is not. It's four continual years. And the Lord says, son of man, prophesy unto Wisconsin that it will go red for Trump. Prophesy unto Michigan that it will go red for Trump. Prophesy unto Pennsylvania that it goes red for Trump. Tracy, is President Trump going to have a second term? Well, it's the same thing similar to Kevin, yes, that in two weeks, we will know without a shadow of a doubt, the victory has been won. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, what I intend to do through him, it will take two terms to do. These are all false prophets. We must not listen to them because the Most High did not send them. Let's hear what the Most High said about false prophets in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16 and verses 25 to 26. That's Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16, and verses 25 to 26. It reads thus, Thus saith the Most High Almighty, Hearken not to the words of the prophets. This means do not listen to these false prophets, for they frame a vain vision for themselves. They make up things and claim that the Most High revealed it to them. This is the vain vision that they frame. They speak from their own heart and not from the mouth of the Most High. The Most High did not send these false prophets. They speak from their own heart. They all wanted President Trump to serve two terms in office that's eight consecutive years, but instead of just stating that this was their personal preference, they lied and said that the Most High revealed this to them. This was simply an attempt to manipulate their followers into voting for Donald Trump. Let's hear some more before I read verses 25 and 26. I believe the word of God. I believe the prophets. I know a few that are absolutely accurate. I, I would be shocked if they ever made a mistake. And, and all of them are saying President Trump has won. So woe is me if I take an, another position than what God is speaking through the prophets. This shameless con man just claimed that he knows a few prophets that are absolutely accurate and that he would be shocked if they ever made a mistake. Yet, we now know that they are all false prophets. They all prophesied that Trump would serve two consecutive terms in office. That was a false prophecy. 
Now let's read the other verses. Verse 25. I have heard what the prophets say, what they prophesy in my name. They prophesy in the name of the Most High, saying falsely. So the lie. I have seen a night vision. They haven't seen a thing. They made it up. How long shall these things be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? These are all liars. When they prophesy the purposes of their own heart. The question could be asked. What if their prophecies had come to pass with 100% accuracy? Would this mean that they are prophets of the Most High? The answer is no. This is because all the modern day prophets that we have seen so far are idolaters who serve the false god and idol called Jesus. Whereas all the prophets of the Most High serve the Most High only. Let's read Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 2 to 4. Deuteronomy chapter 13 verses 2 to 4 reads thus, And if there arise within thee a prophet, or one who dreams a dream, and he give thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, which he spoke to thee, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which ye know not. Ye shall not hearken to the words of that prophet or the dreamer of the dream, because the Most High tries you. He's testing you to know whether you love the Most High with all your heart and with all your soul. So this means that even if the words of the prophet come to pass with 100% accuracy, if he tells us to serve gods that our forefathers, such as Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, and so forth, did not know, we must not listen to that prophet. It is a test from the Most High to see whether we truly love him or whether we are going to follow that prophet. The Most High sometimes allows false prophets to have accurate prophecies to see whether we would follow the false prophet to serve his God or whether we would continue to serve the Most High only. False prophets lead us to go and serve other gods which our forefathers did not know. Our forefathers did not know Jesus, the false god and idol of our Christian slave masters. Yet this is the god of all the false prophets that we have seen so far in this teaching. This means that even if they were to give an accurate prophecy, we should immediately recognize that it is a test from the Most High to see whether we will be led astray from serving Him only. Anyone that follows a prophet that does not serve the Most High only has already failed this test. Judgment is coming. So repent before it's too late. I'm only here speaking for Jesus. Pay me no mind. Now let's expose yet another false prophet. Can you hear me, Sarah? Sarah? Yes, Sarah. Sarah? Yes, yes, Mama. The Lord told me there's someone that you are connected to. Like Tanya? Do you know somebody named Tanya? Tanya? Starts with a T. Tana? Is it Tana? Tana is, my mom, my mom. Tana is your mother? 
Sarah, huh? Sarah, we gotta pray. We gotta pray because as I was meditating, there's something God showed me. And today we're gonna stop the work of the enemy, every plan of the enemy that is against your household. We're gonna bind it today in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because I saw this woman before me. And I saw her fall out in seizure. And I saw the spirit of death coming to take her away. But the Lord says, if we pray and cancel it today, your mother shall live and testify the goodness of the Lord. This false prophet has just said that death is coming for the caller's mother. But if they pray, her mother will, and I quote, live and testify of the goodness of the Lord. End of court. To be clear, she said that death was coming for this person's mother, but if they prayed, they could stop death from taking this woman. The woman would live and not die. Let's see what happens next. Say that again, Sarah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's your mother's health? My, uh, my mom, she passed away in uh, 2009. How do I see that then? And I saw the spirit of death coming to take her away. But the Lord says, if we pray and cancel it today, your mother shall live and testify the goodness of the Lord. When this false prophet realized that her vision was dead wrong, her immediate response was, how did I see that then? The answer is, that the false vision was given to her by the evil spirit that is known in Christian churches as the Spirit of Christ. This is the evil spirit that deceives Christians into thinking that they are hearing from the Most High, although they do not keep His commandments. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9 says, He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, that's the commandments of the Most High, even he has made his prayer abominable. If your prayer is an abomination, it means that the Most High will not regard it. Therefore, the Most High is not dealing with these Christians because they are not keeping His commandments. This is how we know that Christians are receiving their visions not from the Most High, but from the abominable spirit of Christ. For details and evidence of this, Please listen to my teaching entitled, The Spirit of Christ is Demonic. That is, the Spirit of Christ is Demonic. Question number three. Are there any prophets of the Most High today? It's going to be done by the mouth of the prophets that God is going to send back on the earth. And they're going to fight against us. But they don't understand it. It's not one of us. It's many of us. Many of that's unnamed, that's not even named in the Bible, their seed is still on the earth. And we're going to run through this earth and spread this word. And remove me, it don't matter. You know, all the seed to the pits of men, back to the earth. Who's it? Who's it? And like, I think who's, a, who's against seed like the Bible prophet next to Ezekiel and Isaiah? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Preaching the same gospel that all the prophets before him did, and all the prophets after him are going to do. Why? Because we are back. That's why. False teachers love to rip the holy scriptures out of context to trick people into believing that they are prophets of the Most High today. The verse that is most often misused for this purpose is Amos chapter 3, verse 7. So let's read Amos chapter 3, verse 7. It says, For the Most High will do nothing 
without revealing instruction to his servants, the prophets. The dishonest interpretation of this verse is that the Most High will not do anything without first telling his prophets. And as the Most High is still working today, there must be prophets today for him to reveal these things to. Here is an example of a false teacher using this verse out of context to deceive his followers. Inspiration was received, and this evening our prophet made known the will of the Lord. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. How blessed we are to have a living prophet today. Now let's examine the verse in context. To do so, I will read verses 1 to 2, verses 6 to 7, and 13 to 15. That's Amos chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, 6 to 7, and 13 to 15. That's how we get context. We read before and after the verse. Verse 1 says, Hear ye this word, O house of Israel, which the Most High has spoken concerning you, and against the whole family whom I brought up out of the land of Egypt, saying, You especially have I known out of all the families of the earth. Therefore will I take vengeance upon you for all your sins. The context of this chapter is the Most High's vengeance or punishment upon the house of Israel for their sins. Much like the Christian church today, the Israelites were in sin. They were refusing to keep the commandments of the Most High. This is why he told them by means of the prophets that destruction or punishment or vengeance was coming. Verse 6. Shall the trumpet sound in the city and the people not be alarmed? Shall there be evil in a city? The evil in the city is the vengeance that we read about in verse 2 which the Most High has not wrought. He threatened vengeance on the people. The evil in the city is coming from him. This is the vengeance for the sins of the house of Israel. Verse 7, For the Most High will do nothing, meaning he's not going to bring vengeance upon the people without revealing instruction to his servants, the prophets, without telling the prophets in advance that destruction was coming so that the prophets could warn the people to repent from their sins. This is a context. It's simply saying that the Most High always reveals instruction to his prophets before unleashing vengeance upon the house of Israel. We see this time and time again throughout the Holy Scriptures. Before the Most High scattered the Israelites into captivity, he always sent his prophets with instructions to warn the people to repent. This does not apply to us today because we are already in the lands of our captivity. We don't need a prophet to tell us to repent so that we don't go into captivity. We are in captivity. So this verse is not evidence that there are prophets of the Most High today. Everything we need to know to get delivered from the lands of all captivity has already been revealed in the Holy Scriptures. So we do not need and we do not have prophets of the Most High today. To confirm that this is a correct understanding of this passage, let's read verses 13 to 15, which demonstrate that this is about the prophets 
warning the house of Israel to repent before vengeance was poured out upon them. Verse 13. Hear, O ye priests, and testify to the house of Jacob, saith the Most High, the Almighty. For in the day wherein I shall take vengeance of the sins of Israel upon him. This is the context. Testify to the house of Jacob. Warn the house of Israel that I will take vengeance on them. If they do not repent of their sins, this has nothing to do with proving that they are prophets of the Most High today. Stop being wicked. Stop ripping the scriptures out of context to justify false teachings. Again, for in the day wherein I shall take vengeance of the sins of Israel upon him, I will also take vengeance on the altars of Bethel, and the horns of the altar shall be broken down. This is the evil in the city, and they shall fall upon the ground, more evil in the city. And I will crush and smite the turreted house upon the summer house, and the ivory houses shall be destroyed, and many other houses also, saith the Most High. This is the evil in the city that was caused by the Most High. This is vengeance upon the house of Israel. Shall the Most High wreak vengeance on the house of Israel without giving instruction to his prophets to warn the house of Israel to repent from their sins? The answer is no. And this has nothing to do with their being modern day prophets. It should be clear that Amos chapter 3 verse 7 is not saying that they are prophets of the Most High today. Now let's read a prophecy that is truly about the latter days. And we know it's about the latter days because it literally tells us that it's about the latter days. This is the book of Hosea chapter 3 verses 4 to 5. That's Hosea chapter 3 verses 4 to 5. And it says, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an altar and without a priesthood and without manifestations and afterward which means after the children of Israel has dwelt many days without these things shall the children of Israel return and shall seek the most high their power and David their king and shall be amazed at the most high and at his goodness in the latter days in the latter days this is how we know that this is a latter day prophecy it literally tells us that these things will take place in the latter days we are now in the latter days so let's try to get the understanding of what this is saying and how it answers the question of whether or not they are prophets of the most high today verse 4 again for the children of israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an altar and without a priesthood and without manifestations what does it mean without manifestations on www.etymonline.com which is an online etymology dictionary the word manifestation 
is defined as an action of disclosing what is secret, obscure, or unseen. This is referring to prophecies. In the latter days, there will be no prophecies. Allow me to elaborate. The example that's given on the manifestation in the online etymology dictionary is this. Manifest destiny. That which clearly appears destined to come to pass. Destined to come to pass. A future state, condition, or event which can be foreseen with certainty. Which can be foreseen with certainty. We are talking about prophecies or is regarded as inevitable. Prophecies are destined to come to pass and they can be foreseen with certainty. This is how we know that the word manifestation is a reference to prophecies. But let's get some more supporting evidence. In Gill's exposition of the entire Bible, this is what it says on the Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. According to this prophecy, the Jews in their captivity, that's us today, should have no way and means of knowing future things. The Jews in their captivity should have no way and means of knowing future things, either in a lawful or unlawful manner. Before this captivity, our means of knowing future things, apart from what is written in the Holy Scriptures, was by receiving revelation from the prophets of the Most High. That is not available to us in these latter days because there are no prophets of the Most High today. We are living in a time without the priesthood and without prophets. The Benson Commentary on the Hosea chapter 3 verse 4 says this, God would deprive the Jews of the principal offices for the enjoyment of which they chiefly valued themselves, namely, that of the priesthood and that of prophecy. So this tells you explicitly that Hosea chapter 3 verse 4, when he speaks of manifestations, is talking about prophecy. The Most High would deprive his people of prophets in the last days. In other words, in the last days, there would be no priesthood or prophets of the Most High. This means that anyone who claims to be a prophet of the Most High in these last days is a liar. You would never get this understanding from a Christian Bible, by the way, because Christian Bibles, such as the KJV, were designed to deceive the masses. This is what Hosea chapter 3 verse 4 says in the KJV. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. This meaningless verbiage hides the fact that both the priesthood and prophecies would cease in this final captivity. Meaning, we have no priesthood in this captivity. We have no prophets of the Most High in this captivity. For details of more deception and cover-ups in Christian Bibles, please listen to my teaching entitled, The Truth About the King James Bible. That is, the truth about the King James Bible. There are no prophets of the Most High 
in these latter days. Therefore, anyone who claims to be foretelling the future in the name of the Most High is either making it up or getting their information from evil spirits, as this is how soothsayers, diviners, psychics, voodoo priests, witch doctors, and so forth get their knowledge of the future, and the Most High tells us not to deal with them. This practice of getting this future knowledge involves lots of rituals and cult practices. Listen closely. I was a former false prophet, and in this former uh, in this uh, false uh, prophecy that I was doing, it engaged a lot of rituals and a lot of uh, cults in it. Again, the practice of getting knowledge of the future from these evil spirits involves lots of rituals and cult practices. For details of how this works, please listen to my teaching entitled, Can Our Ancestors Help Us? That is, Can Our Ancestors Help Us? Let's hear more from this young man who admits that he was a false prophet who has repented. I remember there was a bishop by the name Bishop Michael Njoroge, uh, from a ministry or a church that was called by then Fire Gospel Ministry. When I say those kind of names, uh, that person was a very prominent and very well-known person in the land of Kenya and also in our neighboring country. And he was a false prophet and he was exposed by one of our television in Kenya by the name NTV. Uh, that is 11 years ago. And he was exposed by somebody by the name uh, Muhammad Ali, whereby he had paid a, 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 a prostitute, for lack of better words, a prostitute uh, to come and testify a false uh, testimony. As we can see, there are many ways to identify and expose false prophets, so there is no good reason to continue being deceived by them today. Don't forget, we could have convinced people in radios and in television, like uh, there was a local uh, radio, uh, local uh, TV station that uh, we used to air our programs. It was called UTV and some many more. So we could air our programs and we could convince our viewers that we have spiritual abilities to see things in the spiritual realm and we are we are we are we are real prophets and one of the uh, uh objective of falsehood is to make sure they gather a huge number of people because to them is not about salvation and repentance of sin and forgiveness of sin and is not about uh, leading them to know god and saving them from internal judgment to a false prophet is about how they can acquire wealth from these global people that have come in their churches. I once had the misfortune of dealing with a false prophet. Apart from his keen interest in the occult and his habit of starting sentences with the most high has revealed to me, what stood out the most was his ability to use crafty words to destroy relationships. For example, he bewitched a couple of women to divorce their husbands by claiming that their husbands were either evil or involved in witchcraft. Then, when I carefully examined the prophecy that he made, it turned out to be a false prophecy. Let's learn more about how false prophets destroy families. And uh, I remember, I cannot exit without saying this, just one second, that I remember we could uh, disorganize or we could cause division between families. For instance, we could have told a woman that it, it, uh, the, 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 the problem you're having in your life, it was caused by your husband. And that is when we could have caused the marriage of that woman and the husband to, uh, to break. 
or for instance we could tell a brother or a sister that your brother is the one who is witching you and that's how we could divide the family so apart from uh, getting money or stealing money from those uh, gullible people in that way we could divide the people those are the uh, kind of information that i'm coming in this as uh, a uh, face of my ministry to bring awareness on how false prophets they execute their agenda and how they manage to lie and to steal and to oppress people now that we know that there are no prophets of the most high today there is no reason to allow yourself to continue being deceived in conclusion the Holy Scriptures reveal that the prophets of the Most High prophesied with 100% accuracy. All that they spoke came to pass without exception. Anyone who prophesied with less than 100% accuracy would have been recognized as a false prophet and stoned to death. Also, the prophets of the Most High served the Most High only and kept his commandments. Any prophet who encouraged the people of the Most High to serve any other god would have been stoned to death. So those false prophets that are leading you to worship Jesus the false god and idol of our Christian slave masters are demonstrating very clearly that they are false prophets because our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, and so forth, never even heard about Jesus. Modern day prophets get their knowledge from evil spirits such as Lucifer. And they deceive people who do not know and understand the Holy Scriptures. We are now living in the latter days in which the children of Israel have no king, no prince, no priesthood, and no prophets of the Most High. This means that although there are people who are making prophecies, they are not prophets of the most high instead of allowing false prophets to lead us astray we need to return to the most high only keep his commandments and patiently await our deliverance from the lands of our captivity do not fail this simple test and with that i say salam